Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Trey Flowers and why I think he had his best career year with the Detroit Lions in the 2021 NFL season. Let's get this started. So, first off, it's his run stuffing ability that also makes him a very underrated player. He's had 62 tackles, 57 tackles, 51 tackles, and 22 tackles in 7 games. So, in regard to Trey Flowers' run something, I would argue he's top three. He was ranked top three by Pro Football Focus when he was free agent for New England, for example, and his run something ability is just, it's top tier. Um, in terms of pass rush, he, he is above average, having a career high of 7.5 sacks, but the sacks is actually an untelling story about... Uh, Flowers. So if we go to let's see, this is it. That's not it. Here it is. His 2019 season, when he was completely healthy, he had 63 total pressures. No, that was one of the worst pass rushes in the NFL that season in 2019. Because, guess what? Romeo sucked at that time. He only had 1.5 sacks and 34 total quarterback pressures, according to DFF. Sean Hand wasn't playing. Zach Harrison had a career worst year. Thus, he left. He was the only good player, other than Devin Kennard, who only had 43 quarterback pressures. So, Trey's got the potential to play extremely well. Uh, Trey Flowers, when he was with New England, 64 pressures. He's got the potential. The fact that he's playing as well as he did with New England when he was with the Lions is absolutely fantastic. Um, so he's able to get the sacks and he's able to get the pressures. He's gotten the turnovers. He has nine career turnover force phone balls. He's still young. He's only 27. And I do want to know a little something. So his 2019 season is a bit um, irrevealing. His 2019 year... His final um, games, of, like, end of the season when he was, like, perfectly healthy, he wasn't dealing with injuries, two sacks, one, 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 one. He, he, he's, he had one, two, three, four, five straight games of having one sack or more. He's definitely got the potential. He's got the pressure numbers. He's got the sacks. And now Romeo supposedly is supposed to be this amazing player like he was last year, hopefully. The Lions improved the defensive tackle additions with Aline McNeil, Michael Brockers, and Levi Onzerike. Amazing additions. And now you even got a healthy Julian Arquora being in there. And hopefully better linebacker play with the additions of Alex Anzoni and Derek Barnes. And a better secondary with the additions of Quinton Dunbar and Ethy. And hopefully another season development from Amani L. Trey can definitely develop it. If he, he's going to be entering the season perfectly healthy and improve the defense with hopefully a better offense. Another thing I want to talk about is Trey was actually playing pretty dang good during the time. He was recognized with PFS team of week six. I'm not a huge PFF person, but he, he did pretty good. Um, he had one of the fastest sacks during that time. He's He's had potential. He's had good games. Let's see. In Trey's 2020, he saw very little action. He only played in seven games. Now, granted, he only had two sacks, but he, he did have, I believe it was, let's see, 13 quarterback pressures. So he did have a bit of a disappointing um, 2020, even when healthy for a bit, but he also was a bit ear healthy. Now, the things I want to talk about is he had two forced fumbles and two sacks and 20 total tackles. He was not playing awful. And you also have to note how bad the secondary was playing as well. There was, like, no time for our pass rushers to do anything other than, of course, Romeo. Uh, you had Jeffrey Okuda just being awful in the beginning of the year. You had Amani O, who was the only, like, solid player. On that secondary, Justin Coleman was doing awful. Tracy Walker was not doing as good. Uh, it's definitely just a fact that um, the secondary was playing awful. Everyone was doing bad. 
the only player who arguably did good on the Lions, other than Romeo Gore, was Jamie Collins. Trey was not around for that. The man is definitely a good player, and if he can, now the team's improved, has a better defensive coordinator, has a better head coach who's actually motivating the team, better additions of players, he could definitely play. I think he could get to nine sacks this year and maybe reach a career high in quarterback pressures, along with having his good run-stopping numbers. Um, another thing of note is um, he did have like some good sacks. Like He went against Donald Penn, who's one of the better defense tackles, not defense tackles, offensive tackles in the league at the time. Uh, and another thing that makes him so nice is his versatility. Uh... Aaron Glenn talked about in the Detroit Free Press article that he can he can go one on one against a guard. He can play three technique. He can go be an end defender. Let him go against tackles. He can kind of just do everything. He can go in the four three. He can go in the three four. He's got this versatility. He's nice. He's got the size. He's got the potential. He Trey Flowers can definitely be good, and I think he can reach that. He's also if you go into the Detroit Lions 2019 highlights, he's got some nice pass runners and he's strong. He throws guys like. Will Hernandez to the ground, and Nate Soldier, and just makes them look like complete idiots. He throws down guys like Galvin. He's got the potential. He got. He can do it. He just needs to be healthy. And if he's out there, Trey Flowers could be the surprised, the surprised player on the Lions defense next season. So that's my video for today, guys. Um, let's hope Trey Flowers is a surprise player for the for the Lions, and everyone's happy. Um, I, this season I'm predicting 52 tackles and 8 sacks and 69 quarterback pressures with two forced fumbles.